Hello everyone, my name is Kimberly and my goal for today is to orientate you guys on tyrosine coupled kinase receptors or RTK for short. The cell is composed of many different type of receptors which receive signals so the cell can carry out a function. An RTK is a type of cell surface receptor which receives signals from the outer part of the cell. RTKs are made up of two tyrosine receptors as they look like this. These receptor receives information in form of signals from the outside of the cell to carry out an action and they are necessary when they are working properly. We need to grow and we need to repair tissues when we get hurt and RTKs are very necessary. Scientists have proven RTKs regulate many key processes including cell growth, cell division, cell death when a cell is not needed anymore. However, this is exactly what I want to talk about. How signaling cell division can relate to things that we all know of such as cancer. It has been proven when an RTK is not working properly, it can be found in many different types of cancers. So let's start. A signal in form of a dimer attaches to the RTK and it forms a dimer. A dimer just means two molecules of the same thing together. So when the signal bonds, the RTK is activated. When this occurs, the tyrosines, which are located on the receptor, are phosphorylated down the receptor on the inside of the cell. Phosphorylated just means it adds a phosphate to become active. So a recap, I don't want to lose you guys. When there's no signal, the RTK is off. When there's a signal, it dimerizes and it turns on the phosphorylated tyrosines down the receptor. Furthermore, when this is activated, this turns on intracellular signaling proteins that are off and they're floating inside of the cell, downstream to the phosphorylated tyrosines. The third protein down on this tyrosine receptor is an example and it's called the, the adapter protein. The adapter protein then attracts RAS-GEF protein, which is then also activated. This action then changes GDP to GTP in the off RAS protein, which then turns RAS protein on and promotes a transmission signal. The transmission signal in this case is a MAP kinase pathway that phosphorylates and activates transcription factors. Transcription factors can make changes in gene expression. Changes in gene expression or gene expression going on for a long period of time with no control to stop causes mutations that can ultimately cause cancer. At times, an RTK can make a mistake in the gene expression which could make a cancerous cell and the reproduction of a cancerous cell can cause a tumor. In, in other words, the enhanced signals in turn can create mutations and cause tumors, further leading to cancer. And this creates a cell that is harder to undergo apoptosis or cell death as I talked about, and it is prone for longer survival. This finding of RTK mutations is crucial in the treating of cancers. I'm pretty sure many people here know people with cancer and undergoing medications. Medicines and chemotherapy use inhibitors, which are signals to block the signal cascade of the RTKs. For example, scientists have discovered an inhibitor called imatinib. Say with me, guys. Imatinib. It is even hard for me to say but it is a medical drug that attaches to the RTK so the signal can no longer bind and it stops the reproduction of cancerous lung cells. So as shown in this example, small molecules block the cell mutation growth of the cancerous cells in lungs. 
Another example is being able to inhibit the MAP kinase pathway in the RTK signaling to help stop cancer growth. I mentioned earlier, it is a normal process and you need MAP kinase pathway to have gene expression which is good but when uncontrolled can create cancer. There are also inhibitors for the MAP kinase pathway to stop the signaling pathway. Scientists discovered inhibitors which they put in anti-cancerous drugs which stop new vessels from forming around the tumor. This breaks up the network of capillaries that are irregular that supply the cancerous mass, ultimately shrinking the tumor by limiting the blood supply. Essentially, the discoveries of RTK's function are important in the development of cancer treatment since they have so much to do with the cancer development. Finding out how they work and how they could be stopped is a work in progress in the medical therapy. I hope I was able to inform you guys about receptor tyrosine kinases and how they relate to cancer. Well, that's all guys. Goodbye and thanks for watching.